Have you ever just, you know, stared at your desk and thought, is this a workspace or just a tangled mess of cables? Or maybe you're constantly swapping devices, plugging, unplugging, just to handle different tasks. Or you just don't have enough ports. It's a really common digital headache, right? Yeah. And honestly, who hasn't wished for, like, one central command center for their whole digital world? Well, today we are doing a deep dive into a really fascinating bit of tech that promises to solve exactly those problems. We're talking about the Razer Thunderbolt 5 Dock Chroma. Our mission here is to unpack how this uh, premium connectivity hub aims to supercharge your workspace, streamline your whole setup, and we'll see if it really lives up to those pretty bold promises. And our insights today are coming from a detailed review of this device, looking at its design, its performance, and some uh, pretty unique features. Yeah, and what's really striking here is that it's it's more than just another dock. This thing represents a pretty significant leap, you know, especially huh. with that cutting-edge Thunderbolt 5 interface. And it's not just about raw speed. It's about this dynamic bandwidth thing. Oh. Yeah, it means it can intelligently prioritize, say, multiple 4K displays and high-speed storage at the same time. So you don't hit bottlenecks. The initial impression from our sources. It's incredibly strong. It's pitched as this premium accessory that absolutely delivers, tidies up the desk, supercharges connectivity. And the RGB lighting, of course. And yes, adds that signature razor flare with the RGB. <laughs> it's designed to be super versatile too. Good for like serious gaming PC rigs, but also sleek MacBook Pro setups. Mm. Really ideal if you need one hub for multiple displays, tons of peripherals, maybe even extra storage. Okay, so we're talking about a dock, but it sounds like this one has a real presence. Before we get into all the tech specs, can you kind of paint a picture? What's the first impression, design, build quality? How does it actually feel sitting there? Right, it definitely goes beyond just being a functional box. Mm -hmm. The source describes it as uh, sleek and sturdy, made of matte black aluminum. It instantly elevates the look of a desk setup. Mm -hmm. And tangibly, it feels weighty. You get that sense of quality, but it's not, you know, cumbersome. And the finish, that anodized finish... It's a really thoughtful touch because it resists fingerprints way better than your average plastic hub. Oh, that's actually a big deal. Those smudges drive me crazy. Exactly. It's those little details, right? <laughs> Keeps your setup looking sharp, yep. especially if you're constantly grabbing stuff. Yeah. It's also got a compact form factor, roughly the size of a, like a hardback novel. So it just sits there unobtrusively. And for keeping things really neat, it has a built-in UK mains connector, which is small. Maybe, but brilliant for cutting down cable clutter right from the start. Yeah. But building on that sleek design, the real magic, um, where this dock really shines, is the connectivity. Let's just dive into the sheer number of ports here. Yeah, let's do it. You get three display port outputs, which are perfect for daisy chaining multiple 4K monitors or even 8K. Daisy chaining, so linking them together easily. Yeah, exactly. One cable from the dock can connect multiple displays simplifies things a lot. Plus, there's a USB-C port that handles both video out and high-speed data. And for older gear, which lots of us still have, three additional USB-A ports for those legacy peripherals. Still essential. Totally, but it doesn't stop there. For creators, there's an SDUHS2 card reader. Ah, crucial for photo and video folks. Absolutely, offloading media on the fly. Then a dedicated ethernet port for stable wired networking which is key for gaming or big file transfers, right? Definitely. And here's where it gets really interesting, the M.2 extension slot. Okay, tell me more about that. That sounds unusual. It is. It's not just about adding storage. It's kind of a game changer for creators or developers. Mm. Imagine treating an SSD not just as an external drive, but like a seamlessly integrated, hot swappable module inside your workspace. Hot swappable, wow. Yeah, instantly accessible. No extra drive cluttering your desk, no opening up your machine. It's a real shift in how you think about flexible, high-speed storage. That M.2 slot especially sounds amazing for anyone juggling huge media files. But let's zoom out a bit. What does all this connectivity mean for performance, especially with that Thunderbolt 5 interface you mentioned? I mean, people hear 40 GBTs or 140W, and they're just big numbers. Can you give us a clearer picture? How does that translate if you're, say, a pro videographer rendering something complex or a gamer? What's the actual feel difference compared to maybe a Thunderbolt 4 dock? That's a great question because, yeah, the real impact is in those real-world uses. And Thunderbolt 5 really excels here. Data transfers are described as whisper-fast, easily hitting that 40 GBPs ceiling. So moving big files. Exactly. For that videographer, it means moving massive 8K video files in seconds, not minutes. That directly impacts project turnaround. For a gamer, it means pretty much zero latency if they're running games off an external SSD. And beyond JADA, 
The power delivery is incredibly robust, up to 140 watts via pass-through. 140 watts, wow. Yeah, so you can charge even a fully tricked-out gaming laptop like a high-end razor blade without needing its own massive power brick. That alone cleans up the desk quite a bit. For sure. And the source highlighted a specific test, actually. With a high-end MacBook Pro, the dock comfortably handled simultaneous 4K streaming, an external GPU enclosure, and a whole bunch of USB accessories, all while keeping the laptop fully charged. Okay, that paints a very clear picture of handling heavy load. Mm -hmm. It really does. Now, we can't talk Razer without mentioning the chroma RGB lighting, that sort of vibrant strip along the front. Is it just for show? Does it do anything beyond looking cool? And can you just ignore it if it's not your thing? Right, the chroma. It's definitely more than just a static light. You use Razer Synapse software on Windows, or there's a limited companion app for Mac OS, and you can customize the colors, the effects, match it to your whole setup. So you can have it pulsing or waving. Yeah, exactly. Like a fiery red wave for gaming, maybe a calm ocean blue pulse when you're working, whatever you like. Now, it might be seen as, you know, a bit of a gimmick if you're mainly using it for business stuff and not gaming. Yeah. But the review notes, it's a nice flourish. It doesn't get in the way. And yeah, you can absolutely just switch it off if you prefer a more low-key look. It's all about preference, really. Mm -hmm. The options there. Of course, uh, no tech is perfect, mm -hmm. right? So it's important to look at the other side. The downsides. The downsides. First, there's the price tag. It's premium. Mm -hmm. And for some users, maybe if you don't really need three display ports or that M.2 slot, make you pause. Mm -hmm. Then for Mac users, there's a specific thing to consider. Full customization of the lighting and also important firmware updates still need the Synapse software on a Windows PC. Ah, okay. So a potential headache if you're an all-Mac household. It could be a minor headache, yeah. Yeah. Something to be aware of. And lastly, that built-in power brick. Hmm. While it's great for managing cables on your desk, right. it does make the dock itself heavier and definitely less portable than some of the smaller, more travel-focused alternatives out there. Okay, those are solid points. So given those things, the price, the Mac limitations, who do you think this dock isn't really for? Is there someone who'd be better off with something simpler, even if they lose some features? That's an excellent point because, yeah, while it's amazing for some, it's definitely not for everyone. If you're a casual user, you know, one monitor, a couple of USB things, right. or if you travel a lot and need something super light, this is probably overkill. Right. You'd likely be much better served by a, frankly, much cheaper and more portable Thunderbolt 4, or even just a USB-C hub. This Razer dock, the Thunderbolt 5 Chroma, it really shines for people pushing their setups to the absolute limit. We're talking the hardcore gamer, the professional content creator with multiple high-res displays, hmm. the developer needing those hot swappable SSDs, or just anyone building a really robust static battle station or pro workstation where getting maximum connectivity and power from one single hub is the top priority. Okay, that clarifies the target user really well. So what does this all mean for you, the listener, maybe looking to optimize your own digital life? Bringing it all together, it seems the Razer Thunderbolt 5 dot chroma really does emerge as a powerhouse hub. It genuinely streamlines your setup, cuts down on that cable spaghetti we talked about. For pro creators, serious gamers, anyone deep into multi-display workflows, or folks who just need wired ethernet and that amazing convenience of one cable for charging and data, it sounds pretty hard to beat. Yeah, and if we connect this to the bigger picture, mm -hmm. um, while it definitely sits at the higher end of the market cost-wise. No kidding. Right. But the overall impression from the review is that for those who truly demand that flexibility, that top-tier performance, and maybe appreciate that touch of style, it's worth every penny, which I think raises a really interesting question for you to consider. How could integrating a powerful single hub like this not just tidy your desk, but maybe fundamentally transform your digital workflow? Imagine the focus, the fluidity between tasks it could unlock, letting you switch seamlessly, maybe from intense creative work to high-stakes gaming without missing a beat. What possibilities does that kind of seamless, high-performance connectivity open up for your productivity or your creative process? Something to think about.